Okay, three, two, one. Uh, this is Mr. Scott, and we're going to do a little quick lesson on climate change. Uh, climate change is the reason why we are studying energy, and uh, it's it's really the main focus uh, for this unit. We are we are experiencing what's called climate change, and um, it's really the heating up of the earth and I'm going to explain that to you and why we have to reduce uh, carbon emissions and we'll talk about that a little bit too. Uh, if you start talking about climate change a good model to use is what's called the greenhouse model and the greenhouse model simply states that our atmosphere is acting like a greenhouse so if you look at the model over here on the left hand side we all in science we always use models to explain things because it's easier to understand so um, in this model it, it it's easy to see uh, and I'll explain it to you the Sun's energy is coming in the uh, towards Earth in the form of rays and those rays will go right through our atmosphere because um, they're not thermal energy they are radiant energy like a microwave oven has um, and that those rays go down and they don't actually create thermal energy until they hit an object once they hit an object they actually are converted into thermal energy at that point so the 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 sun's rays go right through the greenhouse which is made out of plastic or glass and they hit an object inside they heat that object up now that object radiates heat and that's what the arrows the the little yellow arrows are there are going up right the heat, the sun's energy comes through the glass comes in well uh, when that energy um, heats up those objects the heat starts to rise right we we have seen those little heat waves rising up right well that's because heat rises well once it gets up to the top of the glass the glass traps it in that glass provides an insulation and that insulation traps the, the energy in there and if you've ever been in a greenhouse you know that greenhouse trap greenhouses trap a lot of energy well we use that model to explain um, why the earth's atmosphere is changing and what are we talking about we're talking about one or two degrees um, since 1880 since the industrial revolution when we started using uh, manufacturing big huge manufacturing plants and we used oil and stuff to produce energy um, we've increased the earth's temperature at approximately 1.8 degrees now that doesn't seem like a lot but if you live on the fringe um, like Africa right here look over here in Africa what does that look like that looks like a desert and that's what it is if you increase this uh, the temperature one degree you may cut out these green trees and that's what we've seen um, over the last dec couple of decades is more desertification of Africa and southern and central America so for us up in the Northwest you know, we might get a little bit less rain but um, it, it will be okay for us but the big problem will be in places like central Washington or eastern Oregon or places where they are relatively a desert now those places will heat up a little bit and cause um, species to die off and, and go extinct so we, we really have to address this and scientists for a long time kind of had their head in the sand and said well maybe it's not caused by us but um, it is definitely caused by the burning of fossil fuels okay so as you can see this diagram on the uh, right hand side uh, it's it's the real model that we we see the sun solar energy goes through hits the earth's atmosphere warms the atmosphere and when it comes back up it's trapped by this layer of methane that we are producing right we're creating this big le level of methane and carbon dioxide now i say methane and carbon dioxide because those are the two major gases um clouds or vapor water vapor is also a a greenhouse gas water uh, vapor in space heats up too as well so um, there are a lot of natural gases that are up there um, but what we're concerned with is the man-made um, carbon dioxide co2 that's the nasty um, gas that we produce when we burn fossil fuels um, and we also produce some when we burn anything or we have wasted gas or we create gas from uh, the dump sites so let's look at uh, pr overall production and I can you can see how it's really really scary um, uh, out of all the greenhouse gases that are produced uh, you can see um, here's oil 
there's transportation, buildings, and electricity. These are, are major ones, right? We have 25% for oil and gas, 23% uh, in transportation, 12% uh, in buildings, and 12% in electricity. Well, guess what? Those are all fossil fuels. And we, we produce those by burning either coal, natural gas, or oil. So um, as you see, it's a huge problem. And the reason why it's such a huge problem is because our economy is built on these things. These thi these, this oil and this energy that's produced by uh, the fossil fuels creates a lot of wealth for us. So we don't want to stop doing this. The problem is that we're going to kill the earth if we don't. So scientists uh, are taxed with this whole idea of converting uh, or switching over from fossil fuels to an alternative fuel source. And that's what you guys are studying today. Some of you are talking about the evil fossil fuels. Some of you are talking about alternative fuels like wind power, solar power, and nuclear power, which do not create uh, greenhouse gases. Bill Gates, I listened to him and some of the most brilliant minds in the world talking on TED uh, TV and TED video the other day, and they said we have to get to zero uh, in production of uh, carbon dioxide and methane and carbon uh, and uh, greenhouse gas production. So uh, it's going to be really difficult, but so was going to the moon and going to Mars, and we've accomplished that. So there are alternatives. We just have to put our money in there. And and research sources so anyway that's my presentation I'm going to turn it over to the rest of you and you can explain to the rest of the class what's the good the bad and the ugly that uh, about your fossil fuel I mean your fuel